again with Catherine, the best LSI rep on the planet. Hi, Dr. Tala. And now she's going to tell us some secrets. Some secrets. About how to use this awesome LSI device. That's right. We're, but we're going to take it very seriously because we need to know, we need the text to know what to do, how to troubleshoot this, how to load it, how to deal with problems. So first, take us through, let's, we got two devices here. There's one that we use to actually suture with. What do we call that? RD-180? This is the 5 with a pink handle. millimeter. 5 millimeter. That's what we use for Tamas. This is all about Tamas, not heart surgery. Not heart surgery. Not this sorry. is Tamas. Sorry, guys. And then we have the TK not tire. So most of what we need to focus on is this suturing device. Because, I'm sorry, but it's a little finicky. It's a little finicky for if you don't know what you're doing. Right. It device, doesn't have to be finicky, though. It doesn't. The device can work flawlessly. Uh -huh. It's really just a matter of knowing how to load and unload the device yourself. Okay. And um, there's certain, based on the engineering of the device, certain things that you have to do that are imperative, like resetting the device in between bytes at a 90-degree angle. Uh, okay. And if you don't, the suture can... Um, okay can break or snap. So. Okay, so I'm a very visual person. Just take us through what we're talking about. I want to understand in very simple terms how to get this thing to work every time. Okay. Well, we have absorbable and non-absorbable suture depending on your procedure. And on the end of every suture is a ferrule. A so ferrule. It's, this, uh, it's a needle? It's not a needle. Um, People describe it as a bullet. It's really mm -hmm. called a ferrule, but it's hollow. Um, if I had, it is hollow, isn't it? I mm -hmm. can actually see that on my it's video. It's similar, if you will, to a pen cap. Okay. Okay. So it's really small. It's a ferrule. It's a little piece of metal, mm -hmm. and it's at the end of the suture. Okay. That, that's correct. So, oh wait, where did you get this from? Where did it just come off the shelf? Did I open up a, a separate pack for this, or uh, does it come, come with every one of these? Does every one of these get one of those? What explain to me? Well, they're they're individually packaged, so we'll have our absorbable and non-absorbable suture, and uh, these are individually wrapped uh -huh. in a package of twelve. So you're only going to open as many as you need. Wow. Okay, so twelve of these come in one pack. In one box. Okay, one but box. But they're individually wrapped, so okay. you're not wasting gotcha. product right. by opening twelve. You can, and you then can not open up three, it. or all twelve, or or one. That's right. But you can't open one and a half. You cannot open one and a half. <laughs> All right, let's get back to business here in terms of how, how does, now let's load this little ferrule into the, our device. Okay, let me just point out some different features on the suturing device. Uh -huh. We have our, our white handle, our pink lever. Um, you'll notice at the distal end of the device, when I squeeze this pink lever back here, you're going to see the needle advancing from the proximal side of the jaw going over to the distal side of the jaw. This is a push-pull system, if you will, of suturing devices. When I squeeze this pink lever, what's happening on the inside is the needle is rotating inside the shaft and then advancing over to the other side. You'll also notice on the distal side there's a track here that this ferrule, when we load it, we're not trying to put the ferrule into it. Let me let me show you as I'm telling you. It's easier. Also, when I load the device, I don't hold the device back here at the the white handle. I'm actually going to hold on to the shaft of the device, and I'm not trying to put the ferrule into this track. I'm simply putting the suture on top of the track, and then I'm pulling the suture. And by keeping my finger on top of it and then pulling, that ferrule slid into the track. And I don't know if you heard it, a little audible mm -hmm. click when it we slid did. in. Yeah. Okay. And then the next step would be... Once you load it, could mm -hmm. you take it out and do it again if you wanted to? Or is it just a one-time load? Like, once it's in there, it's in. Oh, no. We, we remove this uh, suture and, and ferrule, and then mm -hmm. we'll reload it with the next one. Um, so before we do that, though, the next step would be to hold the suture up and create a 90-degree angle. Okay. So a right angle from the device. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this pink lever. The needle will advance. It picked up the suture. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to squeeze it again. 
to place it back on the distal side of the jaw. Let's do that one more okay. time. Create 90 my degree. 90 degree. Uh -huh. Squeeze. Mm -hmm. Picks it up. Yep. Squeeze again. And mm -hmm. it places it back on the distal side. You never, ever, ever want to start with the suture on the proximal side of the jaw on the needle. Okay, we always want it back on the distal side. Why is that? Um, it's, it's just designed um, to start on the distal side. If it starts on the needle, you're actually pushing it through the tissue on the, on the needle. Um, so just with the way our device is designed, you, you have to have it on the distal, distal side. Okay. And then I'll just show you real quick. I'll, um, so if that's hollow, how does it actually go through tissue? Or is it sharp enough to go through tissue? Well, the Can needle, I cut my finger at loading this? or No, because it's not a needle. It's, it's like I said, oh. uh, the shape of a pen cap on the tip of a pen. Right. And it's actually the needle that goes through the tissue. Gotcha. Our needle right. is integrated into our device. The needle never comes off. Off of the device. That's I can correct. never lose the needle in the patient. That's correct. It's... Um, Integrated into the, the shaft, shaft of the device, the device okay. only advances when you squeeze mm -hmm. the pink lever. So uh, it's not exposed either unless mm -hmm. you're squeezing the pink lever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the hollow part goes onto the needle as it passes it? It will. So if, if this were tissue and It's we, like magic. It's like magic. That's right. So we, we fill the uh, jaw of okay. the device with tissue, okay. and then when I squeeze the pink lever, what's happening is the needle is advancing, going through the tissue. Mm -hmm. It went to the distal side, and it picks up the ferrule, and it pulls it back through. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I have to come off the tissue, create a 90 degree angle, which I've done, mm -hmm. and then you do have to reset between your bites because we always want the suture back on the distal side, okay? okay. And then we'll take our, our next bite. I drop off and I created a 90 degree angle, which by the way, you can drop off this way or you can turn the device upside down and create a 90 degree angle. It's just, it's imperative to create a 90 degree angle when you reset because of how the ferrule gets placed back into the distal tip of the device. Okay, so you'll see that I reset upside down that okay. time. Okay. Um, and by the way, with TAMIS, depending on where your lesion is and removing the lesion, it could be um, anterior, posterior, it could be more lateral. Mm -hmm. So you'll just turn your device going into your port, whichever mm -hmm. direction you need um, mm -hmm. for, the, uh, for the jaw. Right, okay. okay, makes sense. Yeah, now on your third bite, to not lock it, you always want to make sure that your suture is trailing you. So this is what you don't want. You don't want your suture looped up in front of you and taking that bite. That will lock you. Um, a good way to manage your suture is this longer suture is going to be coming out of the port. You can pull back on it if you have to. Um, less suture with our suturing device is better, uh -huh. where if your hand's sewing intercorporeally, you know, more suture down there can be advantageous. Um, so the correct way to do our third bite would be to have the suture trailing behind me because we're, we're heading more medial here. So mm -hmm. it's trailing behind me. I'm going to take my next bite and then um, let's see, drop off and then reset. And then we'll take our last bite for the figure of eight, take our bite, drop off, reset. And then at that point, we're going to come out of the port. If you get any kind of resistance so we don't tear through the tissue right. or snap mm -hmm. or, or the suture, just do a little pull and pause, pull sure. and pause. Right. So we're not mm -hmm. keeping constant tension on it. Mm -hmm. At this point, we're going to come out of the port. And you're going to want to leave a suture tail so we can unload this device and then reload it. So leave a tail on the end of the device. And we're going to trim um, these sutures. Mm -hmm. Let's try my scissors here. We're going to trim both sutures evenly. Okay. Okay. And you'll notice that there, I left a tail on the end of the device. Uh -huh. And at this point, you or your scrub tech will unload the device and then reload it. So to With the new suture. That's okay. correct. Can yes. you show us how to unload it? Yes. So to unload it, you want to first make sure that the suture is on the needle. Remember, the needle advances from the proximal side of the jaw. So I'm going to hold the suture up once again at 90 degrees. Okay. I'm going to squeeze the lever firmly so it picks up the suture. You can see the suture is now on the needle. Okay, I'll let it retract. And back here on the lever, instead of me squeezing the pink lever this direction, 
I'm going to hold on to the white handle. Okay, one second. So your needle is on the inside, the ferrule's to the shaft. The, the ferrule is on the needle. All right. And on the proximal, on the side, proximal of the jaw. side of the jaw. Okay, Correct. now what are we doing? Are we now here? I'm going to hold on to the white handle, mm -hmm. and instead of me squeezing the lever this direction like we usually would, mm -hmm. if you notice right here, there's a seam, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pull backwards on this pink lever. With that Don't is, try this at home. <laughs> and what that's doing okay. is it's releasing the ferrule. So at this point, you can just grab the suture, and it comes right off. You always want to make sure... Your hand is off it now. You already did that little move, the back pull. I did. And now you're and then just going to grab this You just grab the out. suture, and it comes right off. You shouldn't have any resistance whatsoever. If you do have resistance, then try once again pulling backwards on the pink lever, and then just grabbing your suture, and it should come right off. No resistance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You'll want to make sure that uh, the ferrule is on the suture at this point. Um, and if it's not, then it's probably still on the needle. And we can go over troubleshooting okay. after we uh, do the next device. Okay? okay. So the next device is up. Now we've done our figure of eight knot. And this is, we're talking about the TK, which is a great way to throw on a little clip or a knot and also cut the suture at the same time. I love this thing. It's an excellent device used for so many different applications. But um, all we care about is Tamas. Tamas, that's right. Um, so this would be our tie knot quick load. Okay. It looks like a needle and it's not. It's a blunt curved handle. You'll notice this is the titanium knot right here on the quick load. Um, that will eventually get crimped and then the device also cuts the suture. Mm -hmm. So you can never reuse this, okay? This is a one-time use. One time, You'll okay. reuse the device throughout the case, but we're only going to use the quick load once. And the reason why it looks like a needle, it's from an engineering perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice again, um, we have our white handle. Mm -hmm. This lever is red, not pink. And then if you look at the distal end of this device, uh, you'll see, notice an opening here, and then there's one right underneath. And I'm just going to squeeze the lever just to show you that there is a blade. There is a blade that goes across right here. Okay, so okay. don't stick your fingertip in that. Don't stick your fingertip in that. <laughs> All right. So to load this device, and for every one of these we open, by the way, um, your circulator is going to want to add it to the needle count. Not a needle, but because it looks like one, we don't want to um, right. have your needle count be incorrect. Um, so they can just add it as a handle, a hook, or however they'd like to classify it. Um, so we'll go ahead. I hold the device once again. I'll hold the shaft of the device so I can see both openings. Okay. I'll take my curved handle, and I'm going to put it into the distal end. And now you can see why it's shaped the way it is, because it follows the curvature around. It's going into the distal end, and then coming out of the opening right, right beneath the arm, it. Right, the arm, the handle is open. We haven't done anything with yes, that. Yes, and okay, you never want not, we to... We don't want to do that, right. Um, we don't want to cut this the red piece of melanin. lever. Oh, it'll actually yeah. ruin your device. It'll, yeah, we're not It'll do that. damage the blade and, and ruin the device altogether. So okay. you never want to be really cognizant of that as well, that you don't bump this while you're loading it mm -hmm. um, or squeeze the lever. So we'll place the curved handle into the distal end of the device. It follows the curvature around. And you have to make sure that you seat the titanium knot flush in the tip of the device. You can see there's no space here whatsoever. It's seated flush into the tip of the device and it's flat. And to do that, you can't, I'm gonna pull it back up just to show you again. You can't try pushing this in sideways. You have to hold it up nice and straight, push it down in, seat it. Once it's flush, hold on to the curved handle and the device and there's a wire going around this white rubber piece. It's called a target. And I'm going to hold on to the curved handle so this doesn't pop back up out of the tip of the device. All I'm going to do, and this is similar to maybe opening a can of soda, I'm, I'm just going to push this one direction. So I'm not pulling. Um, you'll notice there's a raised button right here. Um, I'm just going to put my finger on here with my thumb and push one direction. And I push this white rubber piece out. Um, should this pop up at all, like I said, just take your finger, push it back down in. Mm -hmm. Now we have our titanium knot in the tip of our device. It's seated nice and flush with the tip of the device. And I always give the curved handle just a little pull to start it. That way you won't have as much resistance when you put your sutures through. So when we're ready to use this device, we'll take 
both of 